There is a reason for the famous saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Rome was one of the most bustling city centers for civilization and offers a unique insight into the past. Few cities are saturated with so much history and vibrancy, and even fewer provide access to wander these places on your own or as part of tour groups. In today's video, we'll be walking you through 12 places you simply must add to any Rome travel itinerary. Before I get started, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a travel video. Ring the bell to ensure you always know when the latest video hits our channel. Number 12. Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore The first of two basilicas on our list, Santa Maria Maggiore is the less known of the two we'll touch on. Rome has many churches, but not all of them have golden ceilings. The church was founded in 432 and is the largest church in Rome that is dedicated to the Virgin Mary, hence the name. It has a prime location on top of Esquiline Hill, one of the seven hills of Rome. Number 11. St. Peter's Square Also known as Piazza San Pietro, St. Peter's Square is one of the world's most famous public squares. Architect and artist Bernini designed the area, which can hold more than 300,000 people. An impressive 284 columns line the square, as well as 140 statues depicting various saints that live above the columns. A fountain and Egyptian obelisk adorn the center of the square. It's no surprise that this massive and famous open area is used to host the papal audience, cultural events, and other religious events. Shops line the square so you can bask in the square's charm and beauty or grab some souvenirs from one of the many vendors who operate in the area. Number 10. Campo di Fiori Rome has countless historical sites to enjoy, but it also has some modern marvels. One of them is Campo di Fiori, the Field of Flowers. This pavilion, paved in the 15th century, serves as a massive market during the day. You will find flowers, fruits, packaged goods, and vegetables for sale six days a week, from morning until early afternoon. Historically, the square was where vendors operated and sold their goods, so it's a lovely continuing tribute to the area's history. A large statue overshadows much of the pavilion. The figure depicts philosopher Giordano Bruno, who was labeled a heretic and burned at a stake in the plaza. Number 9. Piazza Navona Piazza Navona was once the location for Rome's first permanent venue for competitive sports. Sports like foot races, track and field, and even gladiatorial combat took place on these grounds. Once the area fell into disuse, it was eventually converted into a public space where three fountains and other examples of artwork and architecture were added for public enjoyment. Before Campo di Fiori became the main market square, Navona served this purpose for hundreds of years. Number 8. Castel Sant'Angelo While walking along Navona's piazza, you may see a strange rotund castle across the river Ponte degli Angeli. This less visited location was first built by a Roman emperor who wanted a mausoleum dedicated to himself, his family, and his descendants. It was repurposed as a fortress when Rome was spending its time fighting off barbarian attacks. It was added again in the 13th century when Pope Nicholas III connected the two with Passetto di Borgo. This passage was made famous in Dan Brown's Angels and Demons. Inside, you'll find a museum with various exhibits and memorabilia, and you can quickly breeze through the rooms or take your time and enjoy each piece of history on display. Number 7. Roman Forum For centuries, the fate of Europe was debated and decided at the Roman Forum. Few places have such a history oozing from their grounds. This is a vast area, and it can be challenging to understand and visualize what once was. The best way to enjoy this area is with a self-guided headset tour or an expert guide. With either of these two methods, you'll get stories and insights that make the surrounding landscape come to life. The Basilica of Constantine was at one time the largest building in the Forum. While only three arches remain, it is still a massive presence in the Forum. Several temples are scattered across the landscape and you can wander down Via Sacra, ancient Rome's main street. You can also visit nearby Palatine Hill, the centermost of the seven hills of Rome, and considered the first nucleus of the Roman Empire. Number 6. Spanish Steps The Spanish Steps were built in the first quarter of the 18th century. The 135 steps are broken up by three terraces representing the Holy Trinity. The name of the steps hints at a time in the 17th century when the Spanish embassy was located on the square. It was called the Piazza di Spagna. 
the name Spanish Steps has stuck, but their proper name is Scalinata de la Trinita de Monti. Most will be more familiar with the generic term, Spanish Steps. Although Roman law prohibits people from loitering on the steps with food or drink, they're often crowded with tourists. If you want to enjoy the view without navigating the crowds, grab a cup of tea at the base of the steps at Babington's Tea Room. Number 5. Trevi Fountain Trevi Fountain, or the Fontana di Trevi, is one of the most recognizable fountains in the world. It's nearly 90 feet tall and more than 160 feet wide at its base. One of the traditions associated with the fountain is tossing a coin into the fountain. You might think you've done this a few times in your youth, but you might not be aware there is a specific way to toss your coins to get the best results. Close your eyes and toss the coin behind you, over your left shoulder using your right hand. A single coin means you'll return to Rome someday. Tossing two coins will help you find love in Rome, and three coins will set you on the path to either marriage or divorce. The city of Rome donates a large amount of the money thrown in the fountain to a charity that assists low-income families. This amounts to over $1.4 million each year. Number 4. Vatican Museums The Vatican Museums and Sistine Chapel can eat up a lot of time. The Vatican is technically its own country, so you can say you visited two countries if you add this stop to your list while in Rome. The museums will take at least two or three hours to navigate, and the Sistine Chapel might take another two hours after you've waited in a line for entry. There are many museums within the Vatican, and you can think of the Sistine Chapel as one of those museums. During your visit, you can also explore Gregorian, Egyptian, and Etruscan museums, courtyards, additional chapels, apartments, and pavilions. The Sistine Chapel offers an impressive example of detailed frescoes. This artwork's a variety of holy stories, and of course, you have Michelangelo's famous work adorning the ceiling. Number 3. The Pantheon The Pantheon might not be as grandiose as the Colosseum, but it is hailed as Rome's best preserved building. Construction started in 27 BCE under the leadership of Marcus Agrippa. A dome was added in the second century and is still the largest reinforced concrete dome in the world. Pantheon is Greek for devoted to all gods, although this building was not used as a church until almost 600 years later. Although you can visit the Pantheon as a tourist every day of the week, the Catholic Mass continues to take place regularly. It has been uninterrupted since May of 609. Enjoy a cup of Rome's most famous coffee at the nearby Sant'Ustacio Cafe. They claim to have the best espresso on earth, so take a swig and make your own appraisal. Number 2. St. Peter's Basilica St. Peter's Basilica is technically part of Vatican City, which we'll get to, but is technically free to visit separately. If you plan to see this fantastic location, make sure to arrive early. A full line may take as long as four hours to get inside, so planning to be among the first in line is your best bet for beating the crowds. Remember that this is a religious venue, so you'll need to respect the dress code. Knees and shoulders must be covered regardless of temperature. Failure to follow the dress code will result in you being turned away at the door after your long wait. For a small fee, you can also explore the cupola, the famous dome that Michelangelo started. Get ready for some stairs. You'll climb many grueling stairs to get your reward at the top. If you'd rather explore underground, small tour groups can explore the Vatican Necropolis or Tomb of the Dead. It can be challenging to secure tickets since only 250 are allowed in daily, but well worth it if you can snag some. Number 1. Colosseum As one of the new seven wonders of the world, the Colosseum is a must-see while visiting Rome. As with most of the heavily visited places on our list, having tickets in advance will help you skip some of the waits, although security will still add a bit of a delay depending on how crowded it is. Unlike some religious sites, there is no specific dress code, but shoes and clothing that will be comfortable when climbing stairs would certainly be advisable. Famous for hosting gladiator-style combat matches, the Colosseum has also seen major battle reenactments, executions, and theater dramas. Once inside, there are multiple areas of interest. The seating section has four levels. The arena itself had a wooden floor that has since disappeared, and the hypogeum lies below the arena floor and housed animals, combatants, and decorations. You can still see traces of the original flooring, helping you picture the Colosseum in all its glory. 
This massive amphitheater is not to be missed and is the main reason most tourists end up in Rome. That's it for today's list. Do you have a favorite area in Rome that we forgot to include on our list? What's your favorite city to visit in Italy aside from Rome? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to leave us with a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already so you never miss exciting travel content when it's added. Until next time.